In this video, you will learn in detail how to recreate the title sequence from Loki all in After Effects. So this tutorial will be split into roughly three parts. The first will be the grunt work to create our system to edit our text. The second will be animating our text to randomly change font and be completely editable. And then we'll be adding the textures and effects. I'm also giving away this project file to download for free in the description as well, which includes the textures that I made myself. Now I've got the original intro sequence up here as a reference, and I'm almost certain the folks who worked on this sequence will have designed every single frame individually to be flawless. So ours will be exactly like this, but we're gonna get pretty damn close and we will be able to easily edit ours. So we're gonna start with our text in a new composition, 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. And this is where all of our text options will live. So this will take a little bit to set up, but trust me, it will all come together and be worth it. So first we need to create a guide for ourselves, which we will also use to generate the randomness in our letters. So let's create a new solid with control plus Y. The color doesn't matter, let's hit okay. Call that noise because we always label our layers. And we're gonna add the effect fractal noise, which generates a nice random noise pattern. Let's increase the contrast up to 300. And we're gonna open up evolution options and make some change to the random seed. And the random seed is the value that generates the randomness of our noise here. And we want that to continue changing. So I'm going to alter option click on the stopwatch here to open up our expressions window. And I'm gonna type in the expression times asterisk three. So time increases the value based on the duration and multiplying it by three makes it so that this value changes three times a second. And in a 24 frames per second animation, that is every eight frames. I went through the original intro frame by frame to get it as accurate as possible. And those letters change every eight frames, but we only wanted to change defined areas of our composition. So to do that, let's add the effect mosaic, which essentially pixelates everything. And we want to reduce the vertical blocks down to one. So now we're just left with some columns and let's make it eight horizontal blocks wide and make sure we click sharp colors as well. So we get some of that contrast back. Now, if you want to have more letters in your title, each one of our letters is going to sit within these columns. You can increase the amount of your horizontal blocks, but eight works well for us. So now we've got columns fluctuating random values from white to black, and we will need that later. But now we're just going to use it as a guide to fit our letters evenly into these columns. So I'm going to change the color of this layer to cyan so it doesn't get mistaken, because now we're going to start creating our text. So we're going to select our type tool up here and start by creating a new text box, which we can do by clicking and dragging to the width of one of these columns. Now let's type in any letter we want, increase the size of the type using our character panel down here. I'm going to extend this to the full length of the comp, and then I'm going to duplicate it again and slide it over to the next column, making sure the text box is within the boundaries of this column, and then continue to do that to fill up the rest of the columns. Now I've made six in total because I think our title is gonna have a maximum of six characters and I'm leaving these outer columns blank, but you can easily add more if you want a longer title. Now these text layers we've just made are gonna be our master type layers. So whatever characters are in these text layers, it will populate our other layers in different fonts, which we're gonna make next. So with all these selected, let's duplicate them all with control or command plus D and drag these ones underneath in the timeline. And let's change the color of these top layers to fuchsia. So they stand out a bit more and let's change their color as well. So we don't mistake them. And I'm also gonna right click and make them all guide layers. So that way they won't render in any of our other comps. Then I'm gonna select our bottom layers here and drag them down to roughly the middle of our composition. I might wanna bring up our title action safe. So we have a bit of a clearer guide and roughly get them centered vertically. Okay, so now to link the contents of each of these text layers, we need to access the source code property of each of these layers. So in order to do that, we can select all of our layers and with that type tool selected, right click, and choose reveal source text in timeline. That's an excellent tip I learned recently from the good folks over at Ucromedia. So then we need to find our first layer on the bottom, this L2 here, grab the pick whip from source text and attach that to the source text of our guide layer. And then do that for our O and K and all of our others. So now if we make any edit to this first letter here, it will update on the layer below. Same with all of these layers. Now we can select all of our layers, hit U on our keyboard to hide those properties. And now that we've got everything linked, we can start changing the fonts of these layers down here. So I'm gonna change it to a font I think will work. And this comp is 20 seconds long. And I want 10 font options for us to cycle through. So I'm gonna make all of these layers two seconds long. And now for our next font selection, I'm gonna select these all, duplicate them with Control D, move them above these layers, and then move them across two seconds into the timeline. So they play in a sequence and then change the font of these layers. 
Now in the original title, the font size changes a lot. So let's make these ones much smaller and then push these down to be roughly centered vertically as well. And now it's actually a very good time to change all of the characters in our master layers to an uppercase M. And that is because an uppercase M is the widest character in any typeface. So now we can make sure that whatever font we choose, our type isn't gonna to be too big to not show within that type box. So let's duplicate these layers again, change the font and adjust the size and continue to do that until we have 10 copies of our type with different fonts. Now I'm using these typefaces, which are all available on Adobe Typekit. And I'm trying to select as many different types to match the huge variety that were in the original title sequence. If you have Creative Cloud, you'll be able to get these. Otherwise, I'm very sorry for the font not found message when you download and open the project file. So now we've got 10 versions of our type here, each with a different font. And on the very last one, I've used a mix of all of the fonts we have, and this will be our final title arrangement. And I've made their position and size differ a fair bit, just to make sure there is that variety in there. So now let's change from these M's and put our actual title back in. I'm going to stick with Loki, and because that's only four characters, I'm going to use the middle four here. So I'm just gonna delete the characters in the end ones, because we don't need to see them. And because we linked the source text, all of our different typefaces are updated to say Loki. Wonderful. I know that was a bit of a slog. Now let's get to the fun part, mixing up all of these fonts. We can hide our noise layer at the bottom and drag this comp into our new comp icon to create a new comp that we'll call text O2 random. And we are actually going to need that noise layer. So let's go back into that comp, copy it, and then paste it up in this top layer, make it visible, and let's put it underneath our type. So we are going to use these random black and white columns to select each different typeface. And we are going to do that by using the time displace effect on our text composition here. So let's add time displacement. Make sure we take the time displacement layer from O2 noise and make sure we select effects and masks because we do have some effects on here. And what the effect time displacement does is show this comp at different periods in time, forwards or backwards based on the luminosity values of our displacement layer. So because our columns fluctuate between black and white, white sends this comp into the future and black sends it back in time. So let's increase the maximum displacement time from one up to 20 which is the length of our type base comp. Now a very white column will look at what's in this comp 20 seconds in the future and a black column will show what's in this comp 20 seconds into the past and gray somewhere in between. So if we scrub through, we can see all of our fonts changing, all based on the color of these columns. Now we've got a bit to adjust before we're done here though. Let's add a posterize time effect to both of these layers and set the frame rate to three frames per second, just to make sure they're all playing at the same speed. So they will now show a different font every eight frames. Now you'll notice a lot of our first font choice is popping up especially in the beginning of this animation. We can see at the very start, we've got three in a row. Now that is because colors darker than a 50% gray show our comp back in time. And at the very start, there's no back in time. So they just show the first frame, which is this old English typeface. So to get a more even distribution of our fonts, we can add a tint effect to this noise layer. So let's add that tint effect. And we want to map the black to a 50% gray. Now we've got some more variation. Now there will be times where there is some double ups. That's what you get when you generate something randomly many times. So the odds are kind of against us for having a unique font in every single iteration. We're essentially just rolling dice to get a mix of typefaces. To make it more random, we could just add more fonts or we could go into our base comp and change the fonts within each of these batches. But I'm happy to live with this amount of randomness though. Now, another thing we can do is adjust our random seed in this fractal noise. Now at the moment we can't edit it because it is being generated by the expression we added, but we can change that. If we press E on our keyboard twice very quickly, it'll bring up our expressions here. And we can simply add plus value to the end of this expression. So that way it will run through that same expression, but then it will also add the value of the random seed that we have here. So if we don't like our arrangements, we can change that by dragging this to any other number. And of course you could keyframe this if you wanted to as well. Now we want our type to settle on our final result. And our final result is 20 seconds into our comp. So to get 20 seconds into our comp, we need to have all of these columns showing white. So an easy way to do that is to keyframe the brightness on our fractal noise. So I'll keyframe it at around eight seconds at zero, and then at 12 seconds, increase it to about 150. There, it will be pure white. Of course, this is hard to see now because everything's white. So let's turn off this layer and we can see our arrangement here at the very end. So now if we play it back, we have our typefaces fluctuating randomly. 
And then when we get to eight seconds, it slowly starts to arrange itself into our final arrangement. There, so we have done our type animation and we can completely change what it says by going into our text base layer and altering these master type layers. Go back into our random comp and all of this animation and flipping between fonts has all been generated based on those effects and essentially just these two keyframes. And if you find that these fonts are all too similar, you can of course go back into that type comp, change the sizes, change the fonts all you want. It is super editable which is very handy when the client comes back and wants to change the name of the show. Wow. If you're finding this video useful, please give it a cheeky like. It really helps the channel. And while you're there, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on more life-saving animation techniques. Okay, let's change this back to Loki and get started on the effects, which if that was the fun bit, this is the really fun bit. Euphoric even, if you're a fan of texture like I am. So if we check our reference, there are a few different things going on here. So we're gonna break them down one by one. Now at the very end where it's settled on all its final typefaces, each letter is moving independently ever so slightly, but ours don't. So let's add that at the end here. And we can do that using our already made noise layer. So let's duplicate that. And I'm just gonna remove the keyframes of brightness at the end here because we still want those random color values of our columns at the end. And I'll rename this one to fade as well so we don't get confused. And now back on our text base layer, we are going to add the effect displacement map and we'll make sure to pop that above our posterized time. And we're gonna choose the displacement map from our noise layer, not the noise fade layer. And we do want to choose effects and masks. And now if we play it back, we can see our letters are moving ever so slightly. And that's because instead of displacing our comp through time, it is displacing them moving their position based on the lightness and darkness of the column they are in. Now it's a bit too much here. So let's turn the max displacement down to three pixels. And a displacement map is all grayscale, so it doesn't matter that we're using the red or green channel. They're all the same in this case. Now let's hide that noise layer and start adding effects in a new comp. So we'll drag this comp into another one that we are gonna call text03 effects. And let's add a new black solid with control plus Y as our background and put that underneath our text and extend that out. And I'm also gonna drag in our title sequence. So we can use that as a reference. I will mute it for the moment. And we can drag our work area to the very end here. So it looks like it's about 17 seconds. Now there also is a fade in from black at the start of this intro. And I'm gonna ignore that because I don't really like how it looks. And that's really easy for you to add on your own as well if you do on that look. Just keyframe the opacity of a black solid at the start here. Now the most obvious thing for me to add next is the glow. So let's hide our intro layer. And then on our text layer, we're gonna add the effect glow. Now this is really small at the start, just around the edges of our letters. And I like these default settings, but we are gonna add more than one glow. And that is so we get a more of a natural fall off of the light, just as Andrew Kramer preaches. So let's duplicate this effect with control plus D, and this time increase the radius from 10 to 100. And let's duplicate it one more time. And on glow three, increase the radius to 200 and let's decrease the glow intensity from one to 0.1. So that's much more subtle. There, glow is done. Now, if we turn on the original, we can see that there's a lot of texture in that glow. It looks like the glow is illuminating maybe a texture that's on the background. So let's add that. I'm going to drag in this texture layer that I use often. And it is just a piece of paper that I've painted black and scanned in at a very high resolution. So it is very large. So I'm gonna scale it down to around the width of our comp and add the curves effect to it. And I'm gonna increase the values a lot to increase the contrast and to brighten it up as well. Now we only want this texture visible around the glow of that text. And we can do that by adding a track mat. So I'm gonna make sure this texture is below our text and change the track mat from none to alpha mat of text 02 random. There, that also automatically hides our text layer. So let's turn that back on. And now both are visible and within that glow, we have that nice texture from this layer. And if we want more or less, we can adjust that with the curves effect up here. Now, another thing that I noticed when turning on the original intro is that our text is much too small. So let's increase the scale of our text comp by using S on our keyboard. And let's put this up to maybe 120. Let's go higher, 150. And don't worry that we've gone over 100. We won't need to worry about it pixelating. And now let's also add a zoom, which is in this title sequence as well. And instead of animating the scale property here, I'm gonna do that on a null. So let's create a new null object, which puts it firmly in the center parent our text layer to it, and then we're gonna keyframe the scale on the null, ending at 100%, and then at the start down to 85%. So it will be a pretty subtle zoom. And the main reason that I'm doing the zoom on the null is because that if you have a longer arrangement of text or you used an odd number of characters, 
You can reposition this layer any way you want within this comp and it won't affect the zoom. It will always be zooming in from the center. Now you probably will notice these effects starting to add up and making your RAM preview a fair bit slower. So uh, just be prepared for that and reach for your nearest stress release toy while you wait for it to load. Okay, now we need to adjust the colors as well. In our reference, the whole thing is a fair bit bluer and there's a bit of a yellowy green that we have in these white areas. Let's make a new adjustment layer over the top of everything that we're gonna call effects. Well, I'll place that under our reference layer though. And we're gonna add the effect CC Toner. And that lets us map the highlights, midtones and shadows to different colors. Let's turn our reference back on and we can simply eye drop the highlights from our reference, the midtones and our shadows. Now there's also a fair bit of noise in our reference. So let's add some noise to our adjustment layer with the noise effect. Set that to 25% noise. There's a lot of noise. And let's put that above our CC toner so that our noise gets colored as well. Now in the reference, the noise that they have here and the letters aren't really that crisp. So let's add a blur effect to our layers. A Gaussian blur will do. And we'll make that pretty subtle, maybe four pixels there. That just softens everything and gives that noise a bit more of a film grain look. Now, if we go frame by frame through our reference, there is also a very subtle camera shake that is barely perceptible, but I do think it adds a little bit extra detail. So let's add that to our effects layer by adding the effect transform, which will essentially add all of our familiar transform properties, position, scale, rotation into our effects. And we want to add an expression on position. So let's alt or option click this stopwatch and type the expression wiggle and then in parentheses six comma one. So now this will wiggle six times a second and it will move randomly up to one pixel in any direction. Now that is really subtle and it will also leave tiny gaps at the very edge of our comp. So let's increase the scale up to 101% just to offset that. And now there's just the subtlest shake to all of our characters here, which I do think adds to the effect, although I will admit it is very subtle. Now the last thing to add is the textures, which are over everything. Now it looks like the original used about 10 different textures, but I think we can create something very similar with just one. So let's drag in that paint texture that we used earlier over our comp, drag that under our effects, and we're gonna add a similar expression that we just used to create our subtle camera shake. So we're gonna open up its position property of this texture. Let's extend it out the full length of our comp. We're gonna alter option click the stopwatch on position, and we're gonna add another wiggle expression this time in parentheses, we're gonna add three comma 1000. So now every three seconds, it is going to wiggle around up to 1000 pixels. So let's see how that looks. Okay, it's moving around, but it doesn't look great. We need to lower the frame rate so it matches our other text. And the best way to do that is in this expression. So let's put wiggle on the second line. On the top line, add post rise time, and then in parentheses, put three, and then a semicolon at the end. So now that lowers the frame rate to three frames a second in line with our text. And because our texture is moving around so much, it looks like a brand new texture every frame. Now, if you're worried about it randomly showing one of our edges, we can just increase the scale a little bit as well. There. Now to reveal everything underneath, let's set its blending mode to screen. And compared to our reference, it looks a bit soft and a bit bright as well. So let's add a curves effect and let's adjust this to up the contrast. And there we have it. Let's add our music back in and take a look. Now this intro does look pretty simple from the outset, but there are a lot of subtle effects and techniques to really make it look as polished as the original. But with this method, we've got way more options to customize it as well. And just by editing these type layers, we get a completely new intro sequence. Please download this project file and take a look around. I would love to see some of these techniques applied to your own projects. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.